I'm going to have to put a charge back. A little more. It might drop on. Six inches. So I reached this spot about three days ago, and in case you watched my last vlog and you wondered how I got from Pensacola back to this spot, um, it was thanks to some amazing trail angels. We did some kayaking on the way, which was great. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't really uh, do videos through that because I didn't really want to bring my phone. Just stopped at the last store in Florida for a drink. I had to explain to this guy that no, I wasn't homeless, and no, I wasn't a hitchhiker either. I'm not feeling too great, and I think um, a buffet last night was a bit of a shock to a stomach that was pretty used to eating mashed potatoes, but still worth it. Just having a bunch of snacks for dinner, taking it easy. Good night. This was my campsite last night. Nice place. I think I'm going to just um, walk until I feel like stopping today, which is very unusual. I usually try to kind of plan campsites far ahead of time, but for some reason, don't really feel like doing that now. I didn't expect to see this, and I'm impressed. Damn. Florida, 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 you've actually surprised me. Cool stuff. Last night was the warmest night since South Florida, I think, so I'm hoping that means that I'm actually getting into spring, but I don't think it does. That thing's massive. I'm gonna have to walk around that. <laughs> like, look how big it is compared to my trekking poles. This thing's huge. It's got the rattle at the end as well. That's cool. Sorry, man, I'm gonna have to walk fast. This is the third of these little shelters I've seen. They're pretty nice, and it's kind of a shame I didn't stay at one. I think I've just about reached Alabama. I thought until this point there was only one ECT northbound hiker in front of me, but it, there seems to be a few more. Yeah, a couple more. Alabama, Florida. Alabama, Florida. Alabama. I'm staying in Alabama. Good riddance to Florida. It was nice, amazing people, too many swamps, and on to my first yellow blaze. I've used Far Out as a guide all the way from Key West at this point, so it's kind of unfortunate leaving it behind, but I have a um, GPS map which I'm using, like a GPS track, uh, that's going to get me to the start of the Appalachians where there will be an online guide. So this roadblock trail did decide to follow a track for a short bit. It's kind of nice, nice change of pace, although I don't think it's going to last for too long.
so far I've seen maybe 10 cars total today. And of the people I've seen, uh, one of them gave me soft drinks and turned out to be a hiker hiking the Florida Trail section by section. And the other guy invited me to his house for pool and beer. So you guys missed a bit, but I was picked up by a trail angel and stayed at his house. Got some great pizza. And now it's the morning over Andalusia. And I'm ready to go again. I'm just having breakfast in the place they have in every southern town where you sit in the park and you watch the grass die. When I do my business, I just use this bag. I refill it at um, just toilets on the way, like convenience store toilets if I need. And uh, I just um, dig a small hole, do my business, cover it with leaf litter, stomp on it, looks like no one was ever there. I've been told that Alabama has four seasons. Summer, summer, almost summer, and February. Well, this place might be closed down, but there's, there's a spigot, there's a picnic table, and really that's all I need. I'm just camping in the middle of a forest, which is presumably private property, so I'm trying to be a bit stealthy about it. So I'm cooking before setting up the tent. Morning! The cars are still driving, the road is still endless. The forest camp went successful, I didn't really hear anything during the night. Time to smash out another, what, 55, 60 gays? We'll see. Big days, but they don't really leave much impact. It's all road walking. Well, today has not been the best day of my life. Thank God for this shelter, literally, because it's a church. I've just been road walking on this road all day, and it's been raining constantly all day, and the weather forecast says nothing good about the next 24 hours. So, um, this uh, vlog is turning out to be a bit episodic because I cannot really keep my phone up when it's raining. But here I am at the uh, country one stop, the only petrol station, the first petrol station I've passed by today. It's torrentially raining, even outside of the rain, it's very, very cold. So. I've already done 30 kilometers. I'm not sure if I can do 50 today. Um, like it's seriously just, the risk of hypothermia here is real and the weather is only gonna get worse for the next th few hours at least. So I'm really gonna have to review my options, maybe stay here. It's gotten pretty extreme. I'm shivering a lot too. It has been raining a whole hell of a lot. I have had zero protection currently set up under the eaves of Union Baptist. So I was just re-watching uh, Mazikis' vlog of the Alabama Roadwalk, and I'm not sure if you watched Mazikis' vlog, um, but like, he has the most comprehensive um, set of vlogs of the entire uh, Alabama Roadwalk, and also the broader ECT. Uh, I, I don't intend to take as much footage as in my uh, videos are a bit shorter and snappier. But his videos have been really cool and informative. And on the road walk, he spent a night, I believe maybe two nights, camped on the porch of a church because it was raining torrentially the entire day. Guess where I am? Camped on the porch of that exact same church and it is raining torrentially. I am not going any further today. It's four o'clock, I am staying here. 
at the moment I'm kind of just just wondering like why am I even walking on the east side of this continent why am I not just walking in the west where it's drier hopefully it'll pass hopefully the weather's gonna get better Yeah, thank you so much. Just get up. Back up everything. Wait for it doesn't too long. That thing's very wet. <laughs> so as I was preparing to sleep, this guy, this churchgoer, this local, um, let me into the church on the pastor's behalf. And um, I was so incredibly happy, happy and grateful for it at that moment that uh, I forgot to ask if any hikers had come this way this year, but I have myself set up. I have ships, my stuff can charge. I have bathrooms as well. And um, probably most importantly, my uh, wet stuff, which is extremely heavy at the moment actually, can uh, hang on the chairs to dry, so just, extremely grateful for all of this. I think tomorrow is going to be a pretty lazy day because if I go too fast, too far, then I'm just going to get too close to Montgomery and Southern Montgomery is apparently a bit dangerous. So we'll probably take it pretty slow and easy tomorrow. Leaving the church now, it's going to be a pretty chilled out day. No pun intended. And um, I'm just going to make about 50 kilometers today. I wasn't able to show you yesterday, but uh, about half, if not most, of the stores I've passed look like this. Completely closed down years and years ago, most likely. Of all the cool abandoned buildings I've seen, that's probably one of the cooler and more abandoned looking ones. Hey puppy, the floof! Oh! 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 Uh, definitely the nicest dog I've seen on this roadwalk. Australia doesn't really have deciduous trees like the United States does and this is really starting to feel like the first winter I've had in like 11 years with all these um, dead looking trees everywhere with all these trees without, without leaves This is the first unpaved road I'm going to walk on um, for about uh, two days or so See, it's mostly dogs like this Let's try to uh, follow me like this. You know, most likely they won't actually bite me, but um, I've seen dogs which look much worse than these ones. I've been passing around a lot of properties with Trump flags and stuff like that, and um, you know, hunting is very clearly a large part of the culture here. But somehow I've sort of felt like that isn't really the biggest thing about the people here. That is not the biggest that's not what defines much of the culture here, actually. Not all of the culture, at least. Like, in Australia, I don't know what the perception of um, the Deep South and the United States is, but in Australia, you kind of get the feeling that it's all Trump and guns, right? But it's definitely much more nuanced than that. There are a lot of people out here who are outstandingly nice. It's not like everyone's insanely guarded or is an insider to this very small community. It's kind of like, I don't know, everything's so much more open than I would have thought. And it's very, very interesting to see. It's It's been a good place to travel through, at least for me, right? But um, it's been a good place to travel through and I look forward to seeing more of it. That's all of yesterday's rain. I was just hounded by a pack of dogs just outside a house. That was a bit scary, they were trying to surround me. Well, at least the police know of the existence of the Alabama Roadwalk. One of them stopped by to make sure I was okay. So I think this might be where I stay the night. I tried to contact them. Well, specifically, I tried to call, contact them through my aunt, but unfortunately, um, the number was disconnected. So I'm just going to camp here and hope for the best. 
Waking up at the Baptist Church. Yes, the generator has been on all night. And my tent is covered in all these tiny little snails. Montgomery City Limit. There it is. We'll see what this is like. I've been warned against this place. I've been warned that Montgomery is a pretty dangerous city, but uh, we'll see what it's like together. So for the Aussies out there, Montgomery isn't that huge. It's about the size of Darwin, I think, but it has a lot of history. The Civil Rights Movement, this was his epicenter. The Civil War, this was one of the capitals in it. <laughs> so I guess this is the kind of region they call a food desert. I was looking for supermarkets and uh, fast food restaurants on this side of town, but they are all in the north. They are all on the north side of Montgomery. And down here in the south, all you have is a few Dollar Generals, and that's pretty much it. So, um, it's strange, you know, uh, I've heard that basically nowhere in this city is safe for a hiker, but I guess the north side must be better if all the stores are there, right? Check that out. I've noticed a bit of a change, you know, on the north side of Montgomery. Uh, out here, everything seems a lot more well maintained. Everything's, everything seems a lot safer, a lot cleaner. And it just happened just as I was passing a highway back there. In a slightly less modest building, we have the first White House of the Confederacy just a few blocks away from MLK's house. That is the uh, state capitol building, by the way. The downtown of the city is pretty dead. I think everyone does their shopping on the outside, but it's not completely horrendous. It's a nice place. So Martin Luther King did a walk into the city himself, but he only walked like a hundred kilometers to get here. What a newbie. Montgomery, capital of dreams. Okay, whatever you want to call yourself. In Australia, right, I kind of try to really avoid these major chains. And it just makes me wonder, like, like, why do these things even exist in the United States? Why do you have these huge sprawling chains like Starbucks and McDonald's? And, well, on the way to Montgomery, I was looking for a place to stop. I was looking for a spot where I could um, charge up my devices and stuff like that. So I looked for fast food restaurants and I found a fair number of fast food restaurants. But so many of them were these random ones, these random names, uh, small chains, I'm assuming. And I just, I had passed a bunch of these things already and they were just in these dilapidated neighborhoods surrounded by these wrecks of strip malls and just seemed like a very strange not a very good place to be so i searched for mcdonald's i looked for mcdonald's and i went to one of them it's just strange to think about like i went to a mcdonald's because i knew the place i knew what I was getting into and I knew there would be Wi-Fi there. It, it was just this feeling of comfortability, familiarity. So in Australia we have this licorice brand called Daryl Lee. It's, it's kind of everywhere. It's just, uh, you know, where these snack oils normally are. And here they have it, but they brand it a bit differently. Just restocked at Publix. Bad decisions were made. This absolute column of food is weighing me down. I think I'm just gonna make it last. I think I'm just gonna try and um, make sure my next resupply is in Georgia. I think I've just got to adjust from not hiking in the desert. When I was hiking in the desert, I was doing nine day food carries and three liter water carries, four liter water carries. And then 
a lot of people are going like, oh, it's a 15 mile water carry. It's a five day food carry. It's horrible, but I'm, I'm used to it. And now it seems like I'm doing this stuff even when I don't need to. Best view I've seen so far. Shopping at Walmart for a gas canister for my stove and it never ceases to amaze me how big these places are. And here we have some more butane. I got one of these big ones before. I'm gonna change to a small one because these things are gonna get easier to find in the Appalachians. This cell skipping spot is outrageously bad. It's actually overlooking the freeway. But uh, I think the keys have prepared me for pretty much anything, so I'm pretty happy with this. I think I'm just gonna roll up my mat and cowboy camp. Didn't have that bad of sleep, honestly. The sleep was pretty good, the night was pretty warm. Right, to follow the new highway or the old one? I think I might try and follow the old one. Looks like it has less of a verge. But my GPX track leads me up the new one, which kind of makes me think that there might be a problem with this. But we'll see. Just so people know, this does exist on the old US Highway 231. So does that. That's probably the reason why there's no GPS track through here. Well, I was worried this bridge would be taken out, but it still exists, even though it's a bit old. I think that might be the first yellow blaze I've seen in about, um, I don't know, 50, 60 kilometers. Having lunch at the porch of a church right now. One thing I may not have told you, at Walmart, I bought like a gallon of this stuff, this lemonade and brought that through the trail instead of water. It made my breakfast taste pretty interesting this morning. The roads are getting smaller, the forests are getting more and more Appalachian-esque, more steep. Things are looking good, things are looking solid. I've also gone like um, maybe 17 miles, so like 29 kilometers today so far, and it's only about noon. It's just been me this entire road walk. But the road walk will end soon and then I'll see more hikers. Well, things are happening fast. That convenience store, the rundown one, is the last store on the road walk. And check out that beautiful, beautiful sign. Flag Mountain is the first mountain in the Appalachian Range. And I'm almost there. This is it. This trail ahead is still blazed yellow like the road walk was and is still officially part of the Alabama Trail, not the Penhody Trail, which is the first serious long trail I'm following through the Appalachians. But I'm calling it this is the start of the Appalachians and the end of the Alabama road walk. Time to follow this mountain range all the way until it dives underneath the sea.